David Zeritsky from the Bond Experience here for another James Bond influencer moment, and I'm here with my good friend Morton. Morton, thank you for joining us. Yeah, very good, thank you. It's a pleasure. Where did you come from today? I come from um, today. I was at the Double Seven Elements. You were, you yeah, were. But together you, with you. But you're from Norway. Aren't I'm you? from Norway. Yeah, so I arrived uh, yesterday. So it was a long, long journey. You may recognize Morton's face from a lot of things. Uh, he's, he's definitely a, a mover and shaker in the industry, but from a Bond standpoint, what is your claim to fame? You've done some amazing things. Well, I've done several. Um, I started doing, um, you know, writing about uh, James Bond, you're doing a lot of articles, uh, doing interviews with the cast and crew members for different uh, film magazines uh, when I was young. Now I'm getting older. You know. <laughs> Uh, and then it's uh, you know I was more interested in doing events, so I've done you know several events um, together with partners in um, in Oslo and mm -hmm. invited guests like Britt Eklund, Luciana Pulci, um, George Lazenby, Martin Beswick, and Sir Ken Adam um, to to these events. So I think it's been um, uh, quite a nice journey. Absolutely. One of the things that I think people know Morton very well with is really bringing the community together. And the Bond community is, is only as good as the people. So tell me, what, what do you love most about the Bond community? I think sometimes, you know, I, of course I'm a diehard Bond fan and I love, you know, the novels, the films, everything. But what I actually like most is actually bonding with Bond fans from all over the world. And I think, you know, when you're growing up with you know, Bond films. My first Bond film was Goldmine. Ah, that was the first wow. film I ever saw in it's the so cinemas. Young. In the cinemas. Yeah. And you know, um, and you know, of course, when you're that young and watching watch a Bond movie, um, you know, you, you don't think about all the other Bond fans in the world. Right. But when you you know you know get get older and then you discover the world and and then you you know realize there is so many. Bond fans so around right. the world. Yeah. You know, in in Switzerland, in America, in England, in Sweden, in Denmark, yeah. in all countries. And you know, I think what I actually enjoy mostly now going to events is, of course, you know, going to a you know event like Double Seven Elements. That sure. is a highlight and it's you know memorable and it's fantastic. Right. But it's as much enjoyable, you know, bonding with you know you, David, and with other Bond fans. And because it's, you know. The fan community is so great because you meet people around the world, and I think you know these days it's very important. I think to to meet you know other people yeah. from all around the world with different cultures, you know, with different jobs. I think that's an aspect with the Bond community that we actually don't talk about that often. It's a good point. I mean, I find and maybe this happens in Star Wars or Star Trek hobbies where they they almost only talk about Star Wars or Star Trek when they're together. With the Bond community, I feel like there's a little bit of Bond, but then they talk about everything else. Yes, exactly. And it's, you know, it's, you know, for example, today we've spoken about family, yeah. about, you know, kids, about, Jobs. you know, driving license, about, yeah. you know, <laughs> vacation plans, uh, you know, all sort of subjects. I think right. that's, you know, one of, you know, I think that's the most enjoyable thing being a Bond fan actually. It is, it is. All right, so here we go. Tell us about your most exciting to date Bond experience. I think it was probably, um, it, that's a good question, um, but I think it was, you know, being together with Britt Eklund at the um, private suite at a hotel in Oslo when she arrived oh, okay. and then we shared a bottle of uh, rosé wine Wait, together. Wait, where's this going? And uh, then she told me many stories about Roger Moore and shooting the man with the gun gun. And, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, um, you, you hear different opinions about Britt line, but when I was there together, she was the most easiest person so I've, you know, probably ever been with. She was, yeah. you know, and she had so many great stories and such a good storyteller, down to earth. And she was also, I think that's very important, she was appreciating, you know, the Bond fans. Yeah, which and is great. Yeah. The best thing is when they start to really embrace the Bond fans as opposed to pushing them away. We, we like that a lot. Um, all right, so question for you is, we talk about Bond 25, and I know there's a lot of speculation out there, but you're, you're, you're a bit of a Bond aficionado. So 
What's your speculation about what is Bond 25 going well, to be? First about? of all, I have to say, you know, yeah. I've, I've really wanted Danny Boyle as a Bond director for oh. five to ten years. Are you serious? Yeah, and oh. uh, the strange thing is, uh, two or three years ago, I met um, at a cafe um, not far away from Regent Street. I was just sitting there with the coffee, and then suddenly uh, a man says, Is it free next to you? And I said, Of course, you know, you can sit next to me. Right. And then I turned to him, and I, you know, I'm of course a huge Bond fan, but also a big film nerd and film right. buff. And there he is, Danny Boyle. And one of my favorite only Morton and would this happen to one of my favorite movies of all time is Transpotting. Yeah. I love that movie, and also Slum the Millionaire. So that he's sitting there, and I, you know, I don't want to be this kind of uh, you know fan yeah, or you yeah, know, yeah. but as it's Danny Boyle. Before we leave, I just would say I really, really hope you you know one day you direct a Bond film because I think you would be perfect. Stop and, it. And then I said. Um, because this was, of course, after he directed the um, the Olympics, uh, the Olympics yeah. and with his short Bond film. And I said, you really understand British culture, yeah. and you know you, you you work with some of the best British talents. I think you could handle a Bond movie. And, and he said, leave me alone. No, so he, he said, um, I love Bond. I oh. grew up, and he said, I've been a huge James Bond fan since I was a kid. And he said, I actually grew up reading the Ian Fleming novels, and you know, what happened early this year, in 2018, then it was officially announced that Danny Bull was the new Bond director. So that's, wow. you know, wow. and that I got goosebumps because it's, uh, you know, all these things happened. But, but I think Danny Bull is one of the most visionary directors working in the film industry today and definitely one of the most talented British directors. So I think what he'll bring to the table is a new take on James Bond. I think he, together with Daniel Craig and Bob Rockley, Michael Wilson and Greg Wilson, yeah. and together with a fantastic uh, team, they will, you know, do something quite new. I think they will, you know, do something unexpected. Yeah. And as we know, Neil Poston wrote it away. They wrote uh, the original screenplay, but that was, you know, yeah. they, you know, John Hodge wrote a, you yeah. know, a different screenplay, and then Danny Boyle, you know, of course, came on board. And I think what they will do will be very, you know, different. But I think. Danny Bull is, you know, since he's British and he's a Bond fan, that he also understands, you know, the fan culture and the heritage. So I think, you know, my expectations are quite big. I think he will do something um, very extraordinary. Right. Um, and I have my hopes. Well, yeah, you were the, uh, you the premonition behind it. My gosh. I'm impressed. All right. So this is a fun little game that we like to play with all the influencers. We call it the magic wand. So if you could put yourself into any Bond experience, so it could be living a Bond moment or even being part of the movie or the, the marketing engine or something like that, wave your magic wand, where would Morton want to be in the scheme of things, Bond-wise? I would probably drive the White Lotus in The Spy Love Me. Oh. That's my favorite Bond from The Spy Love Me. Um, and then, you know, sitting next to a very beautiful girl in Sardinia and being chased by a helicopter and then, you know, driving underwater, that, that's my dream. I feel like that's been done. I, it sounds familiar, is I guess what I'm saying. But yeah, I would, I'd love to um, do that again. Yeah, again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Morten, thank you so much. This has been fantastic. We're, we're looking forward to big things from you in the future. Thanks for influencing the Bond community. Thank you very thank much you. for having me. Absolutely. This has been David Zritsky for The Bond Experience, and we will see you very soon. Take care. Oh, hey, you're still here. I didn't even know. Uh, you listen, while you're here, uh, if you want, I, I, so I would actually go to this button right here and click on it because then you actually subscribe to our vlogs. It's amazing. Um, you get to see all the upcoming stuff first. You get notifications. It screams at you while you're at work. It's absolutely amazing. Just click on this button, hit subscribe. Just move your cursor, move, 